To create a management pack using the VMware ARIA Operations Management Pack Builder, the first thing we're going to need to do after getting the application set up and logging in for the first time is to create a design. Designs contain all the information about how to connect, collect, and use that data for a management pack. When we go to create a design, we can either import a design that's been exported from another management pack builder system, or we can create a new design. Today, we're gonna to create a new design. And when we do this, we need to specify the design name and the solution description. While I'm just doing a demo today, setting a solution description that explains a little bit about what's gonna be collected and potentially the API that's being used is really helpful when you're looking at the adapter inside VMware ARIA operations. So feel free to take a little extra time always to set this. If you need to change it later, there's ways to do that as well. We'll cover another video. Once we've created our design, we're inside the design page and we have different tabs for each of the types of information that we can modify about our management pack. So the info about it, uh, the source, which is what we're gonna do in a second, the request that it makes against the target API, the objects that it turns that information into, any relationships between objects that it generates, any events that it collects and returns to VMware ARIA operations, and uh, content is gonna be more for importing dashboards or supermetrics that should be included with the management pack. There's some uh, ways to modify the configuration of the adapter instance, adding additional fields that may be needed. And then finally, uh, a way to perform collections and build the actual management pack. But today, the first thing we're really going to do is set up the source. The source is a setup of how to connect to this API system. And in particular, testing that setup against an actual reference environment that we'll use to uh, configure all of our requests later. So the first step we need to do is start to define the source. And when we go to do this, we're gonna be brought to the source configuration page, which is a series of steps that we're gonna go through while defining what our reference environment is and what sort of ways we need to access the data that's there. So the first thing is the reference environment settings. Here, we're going to specify the host name or IP address of our environment that we're going to test against to design our management pack. So in this case, I'm gonna test against this rubric system that I have um, in my environment. The next is the port. It's important to note that this is going to be the API port, not necessarily the application port where you go and access the web UI. So you can look at the documentation for your particular API. If you're doing any test requests using some other tool like Insomni or something like that, um, this will apply directly over to that, that same port. And then finally, uh, we can set the SSL configuration. So if we set to verify or no verify, we'll be using HTTPS calls to make all of these uh, API calls. If we set no SSL, that would be for any API that is just running HTTP. If you're going to use verify, uh, you'll need to make sure that the certificate can be verified. Otherwise, all of the requests uh, will fail for that. And you can do that either, you can do that by importing the certificate into the management pack builder system itself. So today I'm going to be using no verify for this. And this last step here, uh, base API path, is a helper step where if when you're accessing your API, um, a lot of times all of the data calls have the same uh you know, prefix path of where the, the application expects URLs to be hit, uh, hit against. So let's say in this case, API v1, those are going to the actual API, not the web app. So rather than specify API v1 on all of our requests that we're gonna define throughout this, this uh, design, we can just set it here and they will be prepended to all of our requests. So it's a little way to help reduce down um, other things you have to do later. Okay, so after defining our reference environment settings, we need to define the authentication step. So here we're defining two things. The first thing is what credentials we need to use 
uh, against the actual system or our reference environment? And then two, how does the management pack or the HTTP uh, calls work against the API? Um, is there a particular token or something like that we need to use? Um, that sort of thing. So we have two options uh, initially. We have we can either do basic authentication, and what this will do is add a basic authentication header in addition to specify allowing us to specify a username and password. Or we can go custom. So if your API uses something like a token, um, or maybe it has no authentication, custom might be the way to go for this. And what you can do is specify uh, the label for how you want to reference this uh, particular information, like a token, and then you would put in your token value uh, in the value section. If it's something that is secure, like a token might be, you can mark it sensitive, in which case it's going to be treated by the management pack builder and VMware RE operations as like a password field. If it's a user type field or something that really shouldn't be secured, you might want to uh, see the actual value you've typed in, then just don't mark it as sensitive. And you can add any number of fields that you want when you're going through custom authentication. Um, and when you add these fields, you'll still need to add them to however they need to be applied to the API. So if they need to be set on a header um, or that sort of thing, you'll still need to do that. And I'll talk about that in the, the next step. But you would use this uh, usage field, which you can copy uh, just by selecting this. And anywhere you use this uh, text, it'll replace it with your your actual value specified here. So this allows you to um, specify a credential in VMware RE Oper operations, where a user will fill in uh, a specific token against a specific system, and it'll uh, be replaced in anywhere it needs to be replaced when it's doing collections. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to be using uh, basic auth because I do want to use the name and password and I do need uh, a basic auth header. So this is just a little shortcut option for that kind of common case. Again, just like with the custom one, these fields are going to be credentials on the adapter instance side. And while I am filling in values here, these are only going to be used specifically against my reference environment. Um, and the, you'll specify the appropriate credentials for each adapter instance. The last piece of authentication is to decide if you need to use session authentication or really a session collection. And this would be like needing to create a session using information out of that to make all of your API calls and then usually releasing that session. If you do need to use this kind of um, collection format, you set this to yes. And what it will do is add some additional steps of how to define that session, which variables you need to store and use, and then how to clean up the session at the end. And I'm going to cover that in another video, um, but you can do that here. And if you need to use session, just set it to yes. Um, and I'd recommend checking out that video as, as it will go through each of those steps. So in this case, though, I'm going to set no, um, and that will shorten down the number of steps. And we can just focus on the rest of the source here. So the next step is to define and review all of the um, current global headers. Uh, these headers are going to be applied to every request that the management pack makes. So that'll be our test request, which we're going to do in a little bit. And it's also going to be all of the data requests we make later um, and we define in another video. So here we can see it already comes with a couple headers. The first one, content type will always be here, and it's going to default to application JSON. Now, the Management Pack Builder only supports JSON data results. In some applications, even though they return JSON, they still need to be set to a header that is slightly different than application JSON. So if that's the case, you can override that here, um, and it will be applied to all of your requests. If you only need to do this in a particular on a particular request, you can specifically add the content type header on that request, and that more specific uh, header on that more specific request will override the global. So any anything you set on those, it will be overridden by the uh, the case where you put it on the specific request. 
All right, and then authorization has also been added here. This is because uh, we specified basic authentication type. So it's setting the basic auth header here and it'll do the base64 encoding and everything for us. And it's using one of these replacement fields um, where uh, our, our, it doesn't have to actually have a real thing in. Okay, so these are good for our particular setup we're doing today. If we needed to add any headers uh, for our API, we could do that here as well if we want them to be applied to every request. Next, we're going to set up the test connection request. So this request we're defining here is going to be used to verify that we set up the reference environment, authentication, and global request settings correctly. And we can see here when I type in my, um, my path, it is already including the base API path I specified earlier, as well as my host name important, my SSL settings. Now, in addition to this being used to verify that we've set up the source the way we expect, this request is also going to be used when a user is configuring the adapter instance in VMware ARIA operations. When they select the validate during the adapter instance creation step, it's going to take their information they typed in there and validate it against this URL as well. So this just means that you want to choose a request to validate against that isn't specific to your reference environment, as otherwise it may not work against the other uh, environments you want to collect data against once it's installed as a manager pack. We can, if necessary, apply any additional headers, query parameters, or body to the test re connection request specifically. In this case, we do not, so we can skip past this. And then finally, now we can run the request and verify that all of the uh, settings we set up for the authentication and such are working the way we expect. In this case, it looks like we've gotten an error, OSA 422. If we, we can look through our logs to see more specific information about this, we can also jump over to our body and see that the, the API has returned that the username is incorrect. So in this case, we can jump back to authentication and make sure that we've typed this password right. Okay, so in this case now with the password right, we can see that everything is connected successfully. We can still see the response information to see that that looks right. And we could see the log as well, see that everything's been processed correctly. All right, with that, our source is configured and we've been able to validate the connection information. And once we save this, we can see we're back on the design page and we can see the information we just specified about our source uh, here. If we need to come back in and edit this later, potentially because a reference environment is no longer available, uh, we can do that by just selecting edit here. The next step is going to be setting up the requests and defining all the data that we wanna pull back for our management pack. And we'll cover that in another video.